Hello everybody and welcome to your Good Vibrations reading for the week of July 1st of 2018. Doing things a little bit differently today. I want to be here in my office where it's cool and calm, uh, sweltering outside here in New Hampshire. So um, I just wanted to keep this as a cool and calm kind of reading. Um, last week's full moon in Capricorn. Um, this one really uh, altered some things, some pretty big things for me in terms of um, what I'm passionate about and what I feel that I'm built on. Kind of the bones, if you consider, you know how people talk about with a house, having good bones in a house. It's those kinds of things that I feel were kind of rattled last week. And this is what the full moon does. It sort of illuminates an area that is ready and ripe for change. And Capricorn is a sign of our literal structure. It is kind of how we choose. It's the mountain upon which we live. It is represented by the mountain goat that just keeps on chugging, keeps on moving. And that is very necessary energy in our life, but Capricorn also can be very diligent in just looking at eyes on the prize and being so diligent that you forget everything else around you and it, it becomes consuming your drive and desire to reach a certain goal. That is what kind of I feel has been um, shifted and it is feels like a cracking open of those areas in your life where you may feel this tremendous passion and drive and we all have those areas even if they are passion and drive having to do with relaxation and um, you know being nurturing towards yourself it doesn't always mean that you're out there and having to do with work and such it's whatever really consumes you as like a, a big passion. And there's fire involved with that passion. And uh, I personally was asking myself the question, is too much passion not a good thing? Is passion, can pa passion become too all encompassing and engulfing? where you can't see anything else but that? And that's a fair question. It, it, it's really uh, been interesting for me to reflect on that um, because it's our building blocks. It's what we feel we operate from. So in preparation for that, that's what the full moon has kind of cracked open in terms of energy for the collective. And again, this is a general reading, so I'm just touching on some big themes here, but I can only go by my own experience as to what the meaning is. I do feel this week that we really do need to concentrate on numerology because there's a lot of passion and that word keeps coming up here. There's a lot of like invigorating energy that we're also seeing it in some clashes going on on the world stage people are kind of flying off the handle I certainly know I was last week I didn't know what was going to come up within me day to day it kept changing and it was extreme and so with numerology that's why this environment like calm and cool let's let's keep it cool let's get our balance in a little bit here as we head into this week and I feel that numerology is really good in in grounding us again in sort of having some structures to work with because that Capricorn structure by design has been kind of rattled and some things have fallen down or away um, you know it, it kind of uh, unsteadies us a little bit and as humans, we love being steady. So for as a reader here for your reading, I just want to introduce more numerology than I normally do for these readings. And um, so one piece of this is um, 7 one 18, 2018. Um, all of those numbers, and again, we're launching the month with this energy, 
boils down to the number one in numerology. So it is a time beginning this week of these new beginnings. It's being a leader in your own life. It's, it's trying to point yourself in perhaps a new direction. And it's also the gift of inspiration. And so being aware of the people and circumstances and experiences that are flowing into your life this week, which can help you to further define all of that. Also, we have Virgo 8 as our symbol. Now, 8 in numerology has to do with reevaluation and being a business-minded leader. And that ties nicely with the energy of Virgo, which is incredibly perfecting and likes to have a plan. Virgo really helps out Capricorn energy. It's all Earth energy in this regard because Virgo can get the details down. And this is reevaluating how we get the details down. How do we get the details of our life figured out and maybe even the whole structure of our lives is, is shifting. Okay, that's the number eight. Um, and that symbol reads as follows. A five-year-old child takes a first dancing lesson. We're moving into something new here about how we structure our lives how we handle passion, and thinking about that five-year-old version of you. That it, for most of us, the vast majority of us, there was an inner joy that was completely natural. And when we're in environments where there's a lot of like clashing and there's natural winners and losers that seem to be carved out in our experiences, we lose sight of that sort of equality and justice that we had as a five-year-old that is indicated with this symbol and to lead ourselves towards greater joy and just a sense of like fun loving like life is not supposed to be this hard but we as humans we're very responsible we're very driven again Capricorn energy let's not lose sight of that that's what's being highlighted after this full moon and we're kind of trying to get the pieces back in order here of what is our Capricorn energy anyway. Um, and there's just this sense of like, can we just freaking lighten up a little? And I'm saying this as much to myself as to all of you. I need to freaking lighten up. We take things very seriously. We take it as our responsibility that we have to have a voice in so many things and that we have to be the driver of things. This is Capricorn at its best. It is a very hard driven energy that will achieve and wants better and better and better and, and sees the value of structure and discipline and having a plan and working to the plan. It's, it's very rigid. Okay. So this is, that's why this full moon has been so amplified is because it really shakes your structures. And so five-year-old, five-year-old you, it's, it's remembering that energy again. And that is the strong influence to try to get our balance again this week. Okay. Um, so within that symbol is another numerology indicator, the number five. And five is about upsetting the balance. It is about actually becoming a responsible caregiver to ourselves. We get so focused on everybody else and what how we do affects everybody else and that we have to be there for everybody else. And I'm really seeing that this Capricorn is turning this on its head and asking us to become the responsible caregiver for ourselves. Will we chill out? Will we just take it down a notch? We're not helping the collective by getting like super revved up. There can be a thing, like I said, when is too much passion not a great thing? When is too much fire not really helping? not really allowing us to feel our balance. When, when is that, when does that happen? 
So we're being called to just evaluate all of this. And something else I'm going to bring up on my machine here. I wanted to read to you um, the meaning behind, if I can find it, the meaning behind the 185 because that's the um, that is the those numbers that we have are all indicated with this and here's the portion I wanted to read angel number 185 we have one for July 1st 2018 we have eight in our Sabian symbol and then we have five within the Sabian symbol so it's, can you see we're like going down, we're in this nesting numerological energy here. Angel number 185 suggests that some old restraints and constraints need to be shed in order to make way for auspicious new opportunities, advancements, and or promotions in your life. It is a message that the important changes ahead of you or those that are happening right now, and maybe they happen during that full moon buildup and then culmination, um, and the relevant choices you will make will bring long-term benefits to your life. Life's choices and the lessons we learn from them are the keys to understanding the purpose of our lives. Ultimately, all falls into place in your life for your highest good. And this reminds me here of that five-year-old you. You woke up every day, and I'm not saying this is everybody. This is a general, again, general feeling. A five-year-old wakes up really feeling that the world is at his or her disposal. What are we going to do today? My mother and I often talk about our, my son, Brett, bouncing out of bed early in the morning. He was an early riser and he'd say, what are we going to do today, Dee Dee? And he just couldn't, he just knew she was there to be his playmate. And they would go off on adventures. That is the spirit of what wants this to be reawakened as your underpinnings. That it's about seeing those opportunities. Okay? So all of this too I want to mention very briefly is kind of taking us by the hand this week and leading us into this lighter, brighter place than we have been in preparation for a new, a new moon um, partial solar eclipse that's going to happen in the sign of Cancer on July 12th. And then we have the full moon total lunar eclipse happening in Aquarius on July 27th. And eclipse season is always a time, it's like spring cleaning in our lives in a very powerful way. Endings, beginnings, cleaning out, cleaning out what we know, what no longer is serving us. This is just the universe bringing in big, big energies to kind of bring a new sense of balance and purpose and mission and vision. It's almost like at the corporate level, everybody coming together and saying, okay, we're going to work together and build a new mission and vision that's based on where we are now. The last time we looked at this was three years ago and we're not there anymore. And so we get eclipse season every year. So this is your opportunity to kind of reset that mission vision. But in order to be in a, in a space, a, a head space, and a heart space that we're open for those energies and to get really clear and be calm about it. For God's sakes, let's be calm about it. This is why this energy is coming in this week. It's just being lighter with yourself and recognizing that it's okay for some of your underpinnings to kind of change, all right? So let's get into the reading. I don't I don't want this one to be that long because I just want to keep it light and bright and, you know, cool and calm. I don't really want to go off the rails here, all right? 
So the first card up is from the Rumi Oracle deck. And I always do look at the meanings ahead of time. And what I do, the, the descriptions in the guidebook are really meaningful. And so I douse with my pendulum as to which paragraphs really want to come forward to for you and then see if anything else is occurring to me. So this is one I've looked at ahead only for that purpose. And it is the Angel Razbar. And all I could think of, this is such a beautiful card. Truly, the every card in this deck is gorgeous. And every time I, when I look at this, I always think of raspberries. And um, so we'll revisit that if it calls to me. But I want to read you, um, there's two paragraphs, okay? So take this in and see what resonates for you on these themes of the five-year-old child takes a first dancing lesson here. You're stepping into a lighter, brighter, not quite so serious version of you. This oracle comes to you with guidance. You are being guided deeper into your life purpose and divine destiny. Like a maturing adult who is ready to take on the mantle of a greater responsibility, your soul is stepping up. You are going through a process of assuming more spiritual responsibility for the honest and empowered expression of your own essence. And through that, your healing presence in the world is increasing. You are stepping up and forward on your path. This is appropriate now. It will make you more visible, but that, but that is as it should be. It is not about being worth more than another. It is about the utterly sensible use of a light, that it cannot be dampened down by a shade, but instead be placed where it can cast its fullness so that others, still in darkness, may find their way more easily. This is efficient, intelligent, and sensible. Your success and growth is drenched in compassion and brings joy to the heart of the master as another and another find their way, benefiting from the light of your being. So shine true, be humble and not dismissive of your gifts. Allow others to find their way more easily because you choose to honor the power of the great silence that emanates through you evermore as you trust and surrender. You trust and surrender. This oracle brings special messages of reassurance that you are making progress and indeed are on the right path. Although it may not exactly unfold in the way you anticipate, it will indeed unfold. You are making a positive impact in the world more than you consciously realize. And you are asked, therefore, to continue. Do not give up. Do not turn back. Just continue. Take your steps, your journey, and know that the great master is aware of you and is sending the holy ones, including that wise ancient mother, Angel Rasbar, to bring you the blessing of the true silence now. Let it clear and soothe your mind and heart and help you remember the peace that dwells within you. All is well. And I feel here with her, the raspberry, I feel with her, it's like you're putting this enormous, you're gonna giggle, an enormous raspberry, almost, it's mostly over your head, in order to recognize that there can be peace in the silence, and that meanwhile, while you're keeping it shut, and up here, keeping it, tone it down a little bit, and then that natural, like when we think of a raspberry, there's all these little individual segments they're, they're such a beautiful fruit, my favorite. And it's like you've got this over your head, and so you've got the silence and know that in that silence, in that peace, that there's all kinds of things unfolding in your world around you, and people are inspired by your peace. And therefore, they're doing their little pieces. That's the part of the raspberry. It's like you are one, you are part and parcel with it, but it matters how your energy is coming through. And I really do feel it's a time to tone down the firepower. There is times for lots of firepower throughout our life. This is not a time for that. 
that first solar eclipse is going to be in Cancer. This is the deepest part of who we are. It's not a place for firepower. So this is just prepping yourself, okay? I just want to leave that message like that because I think the words are beautiful as this woman, Alana Fairchild, writes them. The second card is from the Angel Tarot. <sighs> and you have, speaking of fire, you have the Four of Fire. And this says on the card, contentment, peace, and abundance, a happy home life, the successful completion of a project. And I'm really getting here. The Four of Fire is like this gateway that we step through. And I want to look at that Four energy, meaning is solid foundations and being a dedicated worker is the energy of the Four. These two, there's, there's Four Fire wands here and it's like you're stepping into a new version of fire for yourself one where contentment and peace is more than enough like what if that's the goal what if that's what your five-year-old self has been wanting all along and you've been like shut up I got stuff I gotta do you don't understand there's a plan and I gotta do these things and I gotta make this happen so shut up. That's what that inner child part of you is like, seriously, you're not even going to listen? Could we just play a little bit? And this is just this sense. I love, love, I love the word contentment. To me, that is, that is, that is something that I aspire to personally. That means more to me than happiness, the words happiness or joy. It is more about being really comfortable in your own skin. I'm sitting here, I'm showing you my big flabby arms. I'm got my bra strap hanging out. Like I'm, I'm just being real with you. I'm just being here with you. And that to me, I'm coming into a place of being really happy with that and really happy of just exuding a sense of contentment about my life and where it gets mixed up sometimes for me and for many other people that I know is when that earth energy that that super firepower energy comes through and wants to drive for more 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 and I gotta make this happen and it's gotta be the best it's ever been and I, only I can do this it's like it just we take ourselves so seriously and we drive ourselves so freaking hard. This is the human condition for, for the vast majority of the population. And when did we ever stop and say, life is pretty damn good right now? Like I I really have created a beautiful life. And when do we ever stop and just smell really I want to say smell your life what what does it feel like and is it enough to fill you up for just a little bit I'm asking you to think about that let it fill you up for just this week you know many people might be with their families here in America for the 4th of July or doing celebrations or being out with people and just soak it up what if that's the point. What if it's not this driving pressure to be more or to have a voice or to, to be in the middle of a debate on the world stage or to be, you know, knee deep in politics or whatever's exploding on Facebook or what if you're just totally missing the point of this inner contentment? That's the, what I feel is this new level of fire and underpinnings. This is the four energy. This is solid foundations. What if your solid foundations are contentment, peace, and knowing that you are abundant in your life? What if that's the frame of mind? What if those are the very underpinnings that you're being guided towards? This is what the five-year-old part of you is saying. This is the new dance for you. This is the first of the dance steps is through this new portal of fire energy. Wow, so 
ooh, I feel so inspired with that card in such a, a deeply personal and equalizing kind of way where it's not about this clashing energy or needing to one-up or needing to be right or needing to speak out. It's, it's what can we do from our own level of contentment? What if that was the vibration that we were individually putting out there? The world would change. It's a big concept. The last card is from the Flower Therapy deck. This card has come up a lot in a lot of my uh, client readings too. It is time to decide. This is Wisteria, which is incredibly magical flower. I'm always so taken. I mean, I'm not a gardener, so I'm taken with anybody who's good at gardening, but these sort of, you know, draping violet uh, flowers. And again, that's divine inspiration, that violet color. This card says, make a decision now so you can move forward. And I'm really feeling, when are you going to decide to step into this mystical, draping, lush beauty of your life? When I want you to picture... Um, I'm hoping I remember if it's called a trellis, um, but you know one of those, um, um, I'm not remembering the word, um, like in a courtyard you might have this structure that you would walk through or that many couples stand underneath. It will occur to me after I turn this recording off. It's like you're standing at the entrance to that. And there's all of this draping, this wisteria, um, draping beauty in front of you. That is your life. It's been there all along. But you've been out with your uh, warrior suit on. You've been out with your armor. You've been digging in through therapy into your past. You've been, you know, hurling arrows at yourself because you're not pretty enough, you're not fat enough, you're, you're too fat, you're um, too tall, too short, not smart enough for your job, you can't get ahead, I don't have enough money. These are all arrows that we plunge into ourselves. They bring a sense of woundedness. And that's where we've been. That's what that full moon in Capricorn was really revealing a lot of this these passions that we have in life and they're not always good they're not always uplifting they're not always leading us to our best and most you know highest vibrational self that's part of the journey here however this card is calling you it's standing right there you're standing at this gateway and this beauty that has been your life all along that the five-year-old version of you remembers and wants to tell you all about, wants to whisper all these secrets in your ear and say, remember, remember, there is a choice in how you choose to direct your energy, to see your life, to see all of the good things that are happening instead of, oh my God, you know, this person did this and all of the that hoopla and it, it's about this energy I keep feeling it of winners and losers of being an achiever or or somebody who slacks off it's levels you know defining what is integrity and we only know that by what is not and oh we just want to point out what is so low integrity and how could you think that and this venom has come up in me this week very much so on many different matters so I know it's cracking through something I've lost my vision and so this is standing before us this is this doorway this gateway this portal into this energy that is going to help us with the eclipses that are coming we're not going to get much out of it if we stay in this place of having our armor on and plunging arrows into ourselves because we're never freaking good enough and driving to be sure that we are seen as number one or that we have the answers, 
you're totally missing the point. And I'm saying this as much to myself as to anybody out there who picked this card. There's this wisteria wonderland right there. You need to change your view. It's time to decide. It, this is very directive energy I'm feeling. When are you going to wake up and look at this magical world that is your life? It's kind of like, I, I've always loved these, the eggs at Easter time that have a scene like a diorama built inside them. And they're all like sugar. They're, they're just so ornate. And we, for so many people, were too focused on that's covered over, that scene is covered over, and we're just looking at the egg and making sure that it doesn't crack. Talk about Capricorn. I don't want it to crack. So we're just focused on that. And so we cover over that scene and like later, I'll deal with that later, but I got to keep this safe. Kind of like how we can be with money and having a nest egg and like I gotta oh I gotta keep it safe and we we infuse so much worry and fear into all that that egg represents that we totally miss the point of what's inside the egg this beautiful scene we need to take advantage of that scene that feeling that wisteria wonderland that is right there but we're too focused on fighting battles and proving our self-worth, mostly to ourselves, to even notice what's ahead. And that energy, this five-year-old within you is saying, please, could you look this way? I'm asking you. And then if you choose to still put the armor on and to be focused in all of these other directions, then that's your choice. But the five-year-old this week is saying, please, could you look this way? Feels very directive. Okay, I want to leave it there because I don't want this to be too long of a reading. And I just really want us to chill out this week. And we're just preparing for these new, new beginnings and some new endings that are going to be help us. It's, it's nothing to fear. I will not ever give you a message of fear. It's, it's to our benefit, but we have to be open and ready, and that's what I feel this week is about. Enjoy your week, and a very happy 4th of July to those of us here in America.